Chapter 4. Dual Limb Ventilation First, attach the dual limb circuit and ensure the ESIS cartridge is installed, seated, and covered. Ensure you have filters on the inspiratory outlet port and the ESIS port. This helps to reduce possible contamination to the ESIS cartridge. This time, let's select Adult Dual Limb Invasive Ventilation, HME, and a 22 mm circuit. Touch the screen button to verify the ESIS cartridge is installed and that both filters are attached. Note the selections for SST, Short Self Test, or EST, Extended Self Test. Both tests should be run before placing the ventilator on a new patient. The short version tests for leaks and measures circuit compliance. It also tests the function of a remote alarm if connected. The long version will calibrate the O2 sensor and test various hardware, safety systems, and alarms. You must be connected to a high-pressure oxygen source to perform the EST. The short version is recommended after each circuit change and does not require high-pressure oxygen to run. Since we are changing to a dual-limb circuit on the same patient, we don't have to run a new EST. However, we will want to select SST. Follow the prompts on the screen to guide you through the test. If there is a remote alarm in use, the functionality can be tested. If not, you can skip this test. Once everything checks out, touch Exit Tests. Then touch Accept Settings and Enter Standby Mode. Once again, we enter the Standby screen. We can either start immediately with the default mode and settings, or we can select a new mode and settings. As before, we can also tweak any alarm setting prior to activating ventilation. Touch the Modes button. You can see that the available modes have changed for dual limb invasive ventilation, assist control pressure or volume ventilation, SIMV pressure control or volume control, and pressure support and pressure regulated volume control or PRVC. Our transformation is complete. We have changed V680 from a single limb dedicated non-invasive ventilator into a dual limb invasive critical care ventilator. With this change, we have also incorporated the active exhalation valve in pressure control ventilation. This will help to control exhaled gas pressure spikes to improve patient ventilator synchrony. The default mode when entering dual limb invasive ventilation is assist control pressure control. Let's change this to SIMV volume control. Note the increase in settings controls as we now allow spontaneous breathing. Settings changes are accomplished as before. Touch the tidal volume button and lower it to 300 milliliters and dial in 5 centimeters of water of pressure support and 5 of PEEP. We can also fine tune the other settings before we start ventilating. Please note that when we set up V680 as a non-invasive ventilator, the total pressure delivered to the patient was absolute, or not PEEP compensated. This was to maintain the familiarity of operation with our legacy BiPAP ventilators. When we convert V680 to an invasive dual limb ventilator, the pressure support is now relative to the baseline PEEP pressure, or we can say the pressure support level is PEEP compensated. Increases in either do not affect one another. However, the total pressure is changed. V680 now operates in a manner similar to other invasive ventilators. The pictograms give visual feedback to these pressure relationships when you are in either invasive or non-invasive configuration. Touch the Apnea button to access the controls for apnea backup ventilation. Apnea backup is available as either pressure control or volume control and has its own settings, independent of the main mode ventilating parameters. Let's set the apnea ventilation to volume control and the tidal volume to 300 as well. The apnea delay time is found in the alarm settings window. It is very important to note that setting the eye time makes changes to the delivered peak flow rate. To take the guesswork out, V680 gives feedback on the new peak flow as you adjust the eye time. Reduce the eye time to increase the peak flow and increase the eye time to decrease the peak flow. The choice of flow delivery pattern will also affect the delivered peak flow. Note how the calculation changes as you change the pattern from square to ramp. Once you are satisfied with all of your settings, touch Accept, connect your patient who was intubated while you switched to invasive ventilation, and ventilation commences automatically. V680 also has an emergency ventilation mode. In the event the exhalation side of the ventilator becomes occluded, 
Inhalation and exhalation are performed through the inspiratory tubing like a single limb ventilator until the occlusion on the expiratory limb is corrected. And don't forget the auto-escalating alarm feature that was mentioned at the beginning of the demonstration. If a high-priority alarm is not addressed in a timely manner, V680 will increase the alarm volume to the maximum setting until the alarm is investigated and the cause of the alarm is corrected. The rest of the dual limb invasive ventilation screen is laid out in a familiar, simple, and intuitive manner. The menu tab has some useful tools that were added when we changed to dual limb ventilation. Touch it and we see the addition of respiratory mechanics measurements and maneuvers. In the beginning of the overview, we touched on V680's ability to provide dynamic plateau pressure values that approximate static plateau pressure measurements. Let's explore that now. First, Observe the breath-by-breath -breath dynamic plateau pressure displayed in the patient data section. Note the value. Next, select Static CNR. The window opens for the static compliance and resistance tests. The static pressure maneuver has long been considered the gold standard for measuring plateau pressure. Touch Start CNR and V680 will initiate an inspiratory pause long enough to obtain a stable static environment and then measure the plateau pressure static compliance, static resistance, and static elastance. Note the static plateau pressure measurement and compare this to the value you noted for the dynamic plateau pressure prior to the start of the static maneuver. The two measurements should be within plus or minus one centimeter of water of each other. This level of accuracy is specific to V680 and the methodology is explained in the Phillips white paper, the V680 Dynamic Respiratory Mechanics Algorithm. Clinicians may feel additional confidence in the dynamic compliance, elastance, and resistance calculations when they can see a close correlation between the static and dynamic plateau pressure readings. Four separate measurements are date and time stamped and can be stored for trending purposes. Close this window and note the buttons for P0.1 and maximum inspiratory pressure, MIP. Two useful clinical measurements of the patient's weanability. Once selected, the P0.1 is automatic and occludes the circuit to measure the negative inspiratory pressure at the 100 millisecond point of the next patient inspiratory effort. The MIP maneuver operates very much like a mechanical MIP meter. By holding down the button, you will occlude the circuit to test the patient's ability to inhale against a closed system. The maneuver has a time limit of 40 seconds. As with the other respiratory mechanics measurements, the P0.1 and MIP are both time and date stamped and four values are stored for future reference. Now let's recap the unique features and benefits of the Philips Respironics V680 ventilator. Two ventilators in one. A single limb non-invasive ventilator similar to the V60 with Digital AutoTrack Plus and a dual limb critical care ventilator with state-of-the-art dynamic respiratory mechanics. A familiar, simple, intuitive interface. If you can operate V60, you should be able to operate V680. No proprietary circuits required, which means you can save money and inventory space by using your BiPAP circuits for non-invasive and a simple dual limb circuit for invasive applications. Non-invasive proportional pressure ventilation with dynamic elastance and resistance calculations to guide patient setup. NIV mask and port leak values set directly, saving setup and testing time peace of mind with the emergency ventilation mode, an auto-escalating alarm feature that increases the output volume of a high-priority alarm if not dealt with within a timely manner, and an active exhalation valve in pressure control ventilation to help improve patient ventilator synchrony. Thank you for viewing this video on the new Philips Respironics V680 ventilator. For more information, please contact your local Philips representative or visit us on the web at www.healthcare.philips.com slash v680 Innovation and you Philips